Okay, so today uh, in this tutorial we are going to talk about the label control. All right, so to start off, I already have uh, a grid with two columns and three rows. So what I want to do next, I want to add a canvas to my first column. And this is going to be a grid that, uh, well, I want this to span three rows. So it's going to cover all these three rows here in the first column. Okay, so if you're coming from WinForms, you remember we used to do something like this, which we still do if you're building a WinForms application. We'll drag a label to design our form and then resize it in a way that fits our form and drag a text block likewise and uh, and adjust it so that's WinForms way of doing it so in WinForms this label only had a text property I believe if I remember correctly and uh, we used for displaying just text as a label. In WPF, it's actually a content control, which can contain anything. Um, so if we want to use for this purpose, just like we did in WinForms, you're probably better off with text block because text block is lightweight compared to label. Label has more functionality and it can carry a lot of content so i just want to throw that out but again uh, that doesn't mean you can use it you can't use it for that purpose so that being said we are going to uh, go move to our right column and do some examples with wpf label okay so i'm going to add a stack panel here this is going to be in grid uh, column one and inside my stack panel let's have a label control and we can set the content just like everything else we can do different ways we can set in here say uh, name or or between the open close tags whichever works for you so and then we can add a text block i mean text box for use entry for data entry so on and so forth and um actually before we go too far ahead i'm gonna add a style here and this is going to set the font size. Of course, we need the Windows Resources tag. This has style, target a label. And the only setter I'm going to have is a property called font name, I mean font size. And let's set the value to 24 okay so this style will uh, apply to all the contents of the uh, label okay so let's give it a height to this text block too let's go with 24 as well now let's run this and see what we have all right so we have a label here and a text text box here so if i type in something here you'll notice the font size didn't change in our next example um, we'll have the text box as a child element to the to the label and that will actually 
course, the font size for the text box change as well. So let's go ahead and add another label. Um, let's open and close this. So here we are, I'm going to add rep panel as a content or maybe stack panel. Um, let's go with rep panel. Okay, and um, in my rep panel, I'm going to first add a uh, an ellipse. It's going to act like a bullet point. So I'm going to give it a height and width. Let's go with eight, width of eight, and uh, fellow of blue. And um, I think that's it. Let's close that out. Next, I'm going to add a uh, text block. This is going to be the label part. So text, let's set this to name. Close that out, beautiful. And let's add text box. And give it a width of 300 for now. And close that out. So let's run this again. Now you'll notice the font size actually changed on the text box. So if I type in something here, hello, you'll notice compared to the first text box, which is default font size. Okay, so that's another way of using the label. Uh, let's do one more example here. Um, Let's say um, this label, I want this to have a wrong spot, I think. Should be right at this way. So let's say uh, I want this to have like a name and a star right after it. That indicates it's a mandatory field, but I want this start to be red color. So let's try in text block, we could do something like this span. Let's see if we can do it here. Um, span foreground red. Now get an error. So the error says content is set more than once so because it's a content control doesn't allow us to do that. But if I get rid of this content and add a manual content, like I did here, so I'm going to just copy and paste this here. And uh, go into my text block here and uh, change this con text property and say uh, name, then span foreground red and close that. I should be able to use it now. No. Invalid cursor. Da, da, da. So maybe I should enclose this one as in span as well. <laughs> Foreground. All right. So now I can I can set the color of the star as I want it to. Uh, let's actually make this bold as well. 
So control KS, change this to bold. I'm going to bold star in there. And let's run this again. Beautiful. And that's because our column, I mean row, doesn't have any space left, so you kind of don't see the whole thing. Um, let's move this actually to a different column, I mean row. Let's change this to, let's get rid of this here. Bring it down here, paste it. Let's change the grid that row one and grid that column one. Okay, looks much better. Okay, so that's uh, three examples we did. And let's do some more. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a simple example in C Sharp. For that, I'm going to give a name to my stack panel here. I'm going to call this SDK for short. And I'm going to go back to my code behind file and right in the, inside the constructor. First, I'm going to create an instance of a label. Let's call this label LBL and set to a new label instance. And let's get a content. So label.content equals, let's say, label created in runtime. And then we'll tell stack panel to add this label. So stack panel .children .add label. Just a simple label. All right, nothing fancy. So let's just run this and see what happens. Okay, so it's right here, label created in runtime. So, um, that's how you do it with the uh, code behind. All right. Um, not worry about the location of the label right now. So just to show you how to do it with uh, C sharp. All right. Okay. So label has another functionality called access keys, AKA hotkeys. Let's go ahead and do a couple examples on that. So I'm going to add a stack panel and place this in grid.row2 and grid.column1. So right here, I'm gonna be using some of our earlier examples to, for this demo. I'm gonna copy this first example here with text block and label, simplest one. and paste in my stack panel. Okay. So here, what we want to do, we want to first place an underscore in front of the letter N, and then give a name to our text box. Let's call this T1. And as step, third step, we'll need to set the target in the label and point it to the text box. So I'm going to set the binding to element name T1. Okay, now if I run this, it just looks like a regular um, label, but as soon as you hit the Alt key, the letter N will be highlighted or underlined. That tells you there is an access key. And if you go ahead and press along with while you have the Alt key pressed and letter N together, 
the focus will shift to text box that's tied to that label. Okay, so that's access keys. Let's do one more example with the complex content. This guy here. And paste it here. So in this example, we can't use the text block anymore because there's something called access text. Okay, and just like uh, text block, we can set the text property and we'll start with an underscore that tells us we have an access key. Let's call this mail. And uh, same logic applies here. We need to give a name to our text box that we want to target. Call this T2. And back in the label, we set the target and bind to our text box. Okay, so if we run this, and hit the Alt key, now we have letter M highlighted as well. And uh, if I press letter M along with Alt key, this second text box gets the highlight, I mean gets the focus. If I press N, the first text box gets the focus. Okay, so that's access keys, and that's all I have for the label for now. All right, thanks for tuning in. Until the next one, take it easy.